and welcome. I have, uh, I'm very excited for the show today. I think I've got some great news items lined up for us, so I'm uh, excited to get going. Uh, in the news this week, we have a collaboration between Cigar City and a Michigan brewery. Also, a partnership between Keurig and Anheuser-Busch, plus bad news for Sam Adams. I'm your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week ending January 15th, 2017. Cigar City from Florida and Perrin Brewery from Michigan announced a partnership collaboration on a beer this week. Uh, it's not just any beer. This is a very, very popular and well-known beer in the South. It's a, an IPA, and it's what I would formerly had called Jialai, although I had a friend who told me that I've been mispronouncing it. Apparently it's Hialai. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not sold on that pronunciation either. It could be uh, Yialai. Maybe it, it might be a soft J. Veronica and I are trying this new fad called uh, jogging. I believe it's jogging or yogging. It might be a soft J. Uh, if anyone does have the correct pronunciation, I'd love to hear it. So please, uh, maybe leave a me message in the comments for me and let me know. The Cigar City Brewmaster, Wayne Wambles, has been spending some time in Michigan these last couple of weeks working on a reproduction of Hialai in Michigan. The reproduction has proven a little bit difficult since Tampa has a different water profile than Michigan does. And so he's been working on getting the mineral rich profile that they're used to in, uh, in Tampa to get it correct in Michigan for the, the brew here. Uh, in addition, the, the hops were very lot specific for highlight and he made sure that the shipment moved, got shipped up to uh, Perrin for the brewery. It turns out that the brewing is basically done at this point and they announced this week the release will be only at the Parent Pub and it will be released on January 28th. So here coming up in just a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about it. It's not a beer that I'm able to get uh, up here in Michigan. They did say it is a one-time only uh, collaboration. So get it while supplies last. It's not going to be shipped out. As I said, it's just going to be at their pub on tap. So I'm looking forward to possibly a road trip. Uh, my wife's not into beer. She's more of a wine drinker, so she won't be going with me. If anyone wants to meet me there or hit me up if you want a road trip out there, uh, I, I'm in the Detroit area. We can work things out. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. Uh, so I would like to have a case, and if I do, I'll have more details on that to come. Keurig made news this week. Uh, you're probably familiar with Keurig if you're in the United States. They revolutionized home-brewed coffee. Uh, they are known for their little coffee pods to make just an individual cup instead of having to brew a whole pot. Kind of changed the way that, that coffee is done here in America. They announced a partnership this week with Anheuser-Busch. Uh, now, in the past year or so, two years maybe, uh, they came out with a new product, not for coffee, but for soda, that they called Keurig Cold. It failed tremendously. Uh, it had only been on the market for about 10 months before it was pulled this past summer. It was a way to make soda um, individual size in your home with maybe a syrup pack and then what they have a technology that they were calling the carbonator which created the fizz. So they're going to take this same technology, this carbonator, and they're trying to apply it to beer now. So Anheuser-Busch is behind this, they've partnered together and they want to create not just beer but a, a new appliance that will do beer as well as mixers and cocktails and spirits. So it's going to be a whole plethora of alcoholic beverages that this appliance somehow is going to produce. Now the brew at home idea, obviously home brewers have, have existed for, for eons, centuries. So that concept isn't new. So I'm not sure what they're going to do. Is it going to be on an individual basis or on a gallon basis? Uh, it's going to obviously have to ferment. It's going to take time. So it's not going to be dispensable right away. I'm interested to see how this comes out. There are already brew at home little individual maybe gallon sized things on the market and I know because every time someone new starts a new one or there's a Kickstarter that you know spreads around the internet, I get Facebook messages, hey have you seen this? Hey look at this, it's only two thousand dollars. Hey look at this, we can try it. have you seen this one yet? I get bombarded because I'm a big beer fan, my friends and family all are aware of this and so 
they just like to help me out, letting me know that these things exist, and I know, okay? So, I don't know how this is going to differ from what already exists on the market. I'll keep on top of it and see what, what develops. As of now, there is no prototype, so they didn't issue anything other than just information of what they're trying to do in this partnership. I, I'm also curious as to whether, since Anheuser-Busch is behind it, if they're going to use any of their brands. Are you going to be able to brew Bud Light at home, for example? So as I said, there's no information yet, there's no prototype, there's no name, there's no expected date for release. So I will keep on top of it, and if there's more information that comes out, I'll try to bring it up in the news uh, as I hear more. Sam Adams was hit with some bad news this week. It's probably not news that they're not already aware of, but the Boston Beer Company has had a rough year in 2016. Through three quarters, their sales had dropped year over year of 7.5%. And for full year, uh, they haven't released their last quarter or their full year data yet, but analysts expect that it will drop year over year about 6%. So that last quarter will be an improvement, but not enough to bring them back to even. Uh, so they, they're realizing a, a very large sales decline. It's their first sales dec decline in 13 years. And not just sales, the stock price has fallen for two years in a row now. So they are in some dire straits. Now if we want to analyze the situation, maybe root cause this and see what is happening with them, you might look at want to look at their beer. You know, is the beer the reason why their sales are falling short or at least aren't aren't growing? And I would tend towards no. I think their beer is good. I don't know that they need to change anything with their beer per se. I'm not one of those beer snobs that's too snobby that I don't like to drink any Sam Adams. I think their beer is good. What they release is pretty good. I've enjoyed it. There's also this idea that there are um, the macro beers are coming in, the Miller Coors and the Anheuser Busch. They are. You know, they're buying up these other brands and taking up shelf space and tap space. I think, though, my personal opinion on this is I don't think it's coming from the big brewers. I think there's a revolution or a change. The, 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 there's a groundswell that there's some shifting going on in the market right now. And I, seeing, at least speaking for what I've noticed and seen personally, I think it's going local. Beer is becoming uh, a localized market. When you want to go to your neighborhood brewery, you spend time there, you get to know the people there, uh, within your own local community. Uh, people aren't looking out to buy, at least the, the craft beer drinkers that, that I'm familiar with and in the community, they're not going to buy, they're, first of all, they're not going to buy Bud and Bud Light and Coors Light or any of that, and it's kind of on par as far as reputation is going to be your Sam Adams. They're still considered to the eyes of many big beer. They don't have local locations. They don't have tap rooms outside of their own location in Boston where they do innovative good things and they have beers on tap that are experimental in their tap room. But it's seen, in, in, at least in my perspective, it's seen as being very elitist. It's East Coast, it's not local, it's not down to earth. They just seem very unapproachable. And that kind of a beer does not jive with what these people are looking for. So I think that's part of what's going on, is they're just missing the boat entirely, where it's not the big boys down pushing him out. It's these local guys that are growing, and since the st local stores are seeing that this is where people want, maybe that's what's hitting shelves, and that's what people are being drawn to, is the things that are local, not necessarily the things that are most well known. With that being said, what might be some things, not that they will listen to me, but what are some corrections, some suggestions that I could give them? They need to localize. They need to maybe do what Stone is doing and Oscar Blues and Lagunitas. And they're, you know, finding, they're, they're expanding out of their, their home state or their home region and going to reach communities all around the, all around the country. Sam Adams and Boston Beer seems very isolated, way in the northeast in Boston. They don't have any reputation. They don't have any locations westward. Uh, they do have production plants, uh, I believe in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, and in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
So they have production plants, but they don't do tours, they don't do tap rooms, they don't open to the community, as far as I know. So that might be a good place to start. Start with where they have locations. Then do things elsewhere. Do things in the, in, in the, in the south. North Carolina has been a hotbed of activity lately. Do things further out west. It might be harder to get in there. Or maybe just focus on the Midwest. I, I don't know exactly where. That'll be up to them to decide. But they need to localize, in my opinion. Uh, we, we may just see if, if things start going badly for them. They might turn into the AV and Bev. They might start having to acquire new brands. We might see them start acquiring you know, some, some of the, the beers, the breweries that we know and love the same way that we see AB and Bev doing the same thing. It's not something that I think we would look at favorably as a craft beer community, but it might be their, their really only source of, of changing things and may come down to that for them. Well, I told you it was going to be a great show today. I've been really excited. I'm pumped. I'm going at it. Uh, I'm done though. Those were my stories. I hope you enjoyed them. Leave me a note, leave me a comment in the, in the comment section below. You can also please give me a thumbs up if you've liked my show, like what I'm doing. Please subscribe, see past episodes. Uh, I will have up here in the closing a couple of videos that you can click on, as well as a, as a subscribe button. Please use them, please click on them liberally, I appreciate it. Also feel free to follow me on any social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, untapped. Give me a follow there. So anyway guys, good talking to you, uh, hope to see you next week, come back and visit me, I'll be doing this every week, and I, again, I'm your host Chris Hardy, this has been the Straight Beer News, thanks for watching, take care.